Well one, my fellow youths, my youths. Look at this picture. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about intimacy with God. Now there's a certain food in my home country, Uganda. And the food is called Chikomando. It's basically like a chap chapati is like bread. There's like naan, so it's basically, it's basically like naan with beans inside and the beans have like spices, you can add like different spices that you want You can make the sauce thick, the bean sauce thick Now if I'm to just tell you, if I'm to just explain to you that how, how that food is the best food in the world You won't really know, okay? And that's just how it is You have to experience something before uh, you can acknowledge that it's the best thing ever And so is intimacy with God I can't just come here and tell you it's the best thing I've ever felt in my life. It's the best thing in the world. You have to experience it yourself. And to experience it, you have to go and get it. And to go and get it, you have to pay a price. You can't just go to Uganda and uh, say, hey, you can't, just, you can't just transport yourself. Maybe you can, if you're cool like that. You can't just, you know, appear there. You have to pay money to go there and all that stuff. You have to pay a price. Now, why is this the most important thing? Okay? Because it's what the God of Israel wanted. Of all the gods in the world, G, small g, only, only the God of Israel comes down and wants to be with man. Comes down and wants to commune. Only the original God. Maybe some people before the God of before Israel was born uh, knew this God, but in, in a different name. Okay. Now, how do we know this? Through one book. The book of Hosea. In the book of Hosea, he begins to describe himself as... Okay, he first of all sends his prophet called Hosea to a woman called Gomer. And Gomer is not any normal human being. She is, a, in fact, a prostitute. <laughs> so, he sends Go Ho Hosea. Imagine uh, some, some pastor out there goes and gets a prostitute who doesn't even believe in God. It says, you're going to marry me. That's what Hosea was doing. God sent Hosea to marry Gomer. He was a prophet. He was known in all the land. He had a reputation. God said, leave your reputation behind, my friend. Go and marry a prostitute. Because that's what I'm doing with Israel. Israel is, has forsaken me over and over again. But I'm here still. And you know what Gomer did to Hosea? Gomer left Hosea over and over again. And Hosea, and God told Hosea, go and get Gomer again. Go and get Gomer again. She's cheated, but go and get her again. And marry her again. She's of no reputation, go and get her again. People will scorn you, go and get her again. Do you know what God looks like when he comes to get man? All the angels are asking, what is man that you are mindful of him? Huh? The, 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 the angels speak up sometimes, you know, the sons of God. Uh, in, J in Job chapter 1 they speak up because they're, they're perplexed man keeps on breaking your heart but you keep on going back how come? so God cho chose Israel because he wanted to bring in his law to show mankind that you cannot keep my law you need a savior he, he brought the law to make us um, reliant to, know, to make us ac acknowledge that we need a savior so uh, that's the God that is the God of Israel. He wants to be with man. He wants a bride. Do you know what marriage is all about? Marriage is a type. God instituted marriage in the Garden of Eden. And Paul says for the first time ever in history that marriage is a type of Christ and the church. And the church is not just some... Church is the chosen, the elect. Not what we see. It's not, it's not like a building. It's the chosen people. Israel is the chosen people. There's spiritual Israel and then there's carnal, fleshly Israel. Israel is just, if you know God and you're there, okay? Like, you, if you know God, you're a type of Israel, okay? It's not, it's not the physical Israel that's the important, it's the spiritual Israel. Yet, at the same time, the all physical Israel shall be saved, okay? Now, where was I? Um, yeah, so it's a type. Marriage is a type. Uh, the Sadducees came to Jesus and said, uh, Jesus, there was this person that uh, got married to someone and the wife died. Then he got married again. Then the wife died again. He got married seven times. They were testing Jesus. They wanted to prove their doctrine of, 
you know, there's no resurrection and all that. And so they they said, okay, seven times, and then uh, the person died. Then they asked him, well, who's who's wife? Who who will be his wife in the resurrection? Then Jesus said, you stupid guys. Okay, you did say that. Just said, um, he said, there's no marriage in the there's no marriage or giving in marriage in the in heaven. All right. There's no marriage or giving in marriage in heaven, but all are like the angels of God. So there's no marriage in heaven. There's no husband or wife in heaven. Because we're simply living in a shadow. Marriage is a shadow. That's why God has hated divorce so much. Because it's kind of saying like, God can now separate from his beloved. His beloved bride. It's impossible. God says, no, I can't. Okay. I married her. I'm going to marry her. Okay. So, uh, marriage is just that. That's why I'm like, why do people even get married? I'm okay with not getting married, but God said get married, so I'm going to get married sometime in the future. So here we are. Marriage is like, uh, the tabernacle is like a shadow of Christ. You can see in the Bible. It's just a shadow. That's the, the temple. So imagine, so getting married after the resurrection would be like uh, going into the temple and cutting the, the lamb and offering the blood. Yeah, Jesus is just there. He's already died. <laughs> you know? So, uh... So now that's what what marriage is. It's God coming into man and accepting man as his own bride. That's why he hated the sacrifices and the doings and the religion and all the stuff because you don't even know my heart. It's like you're supposed to you're supposed to uh, get married to God eventually. There'll, there'll be a marriage supper of the Lamb. Israel didn't know God. They just wanted stuff from God. That's the same thing the church is doing. Money is their God. They just go to God to ask for stuff, to ask for promotion, ask for... Ah, he's not here for that. Because <laughs> Israel was just like that. I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want... Because Israel would, would uh, sacrifice so they would succeed in life, something like that. God doesn't want that. And you can see this in the people he chose. God chose... David was like Moses. Moses knew the ways of God. The children of Israel knew the acts. They saw the... The Red Sea splitting. They saw the water coming out of the rock. They saw the man fall. Imagine you see food coming down from the sky. <laughs> and then you still say God. Because you don't know God. Anyway, you're just seeking for stuff. Give me stuff, give me stuff, give me stuff. That's the same place the church is in right now. And God is coming with his fire, with his fury. Because it's not supposed to be this way. He wants... Imagine you have a girlfriend, okay guys, guys, imagine you have a girlfriend and every time she comes to you, she doesn't come to, you know, to chat, to, you know, get to know you, you know, she just comes to ask you maybe if you like some new dress or something, never calls you for, hey, <laughs> never calls you for, just to talk, just to find out who you are, you know, just to, just to call you to, call you for money. If I'm your friend, I'll tell you cut it off she doesn't care about you she's just using you finish end of story that's the same thing the church is in right now I want you to know me God said more than I want you to uh, give sacrifices Samuel told Saul does God delight in sacrifices more than he delights in obedience you know obedience is the main thing of intimacy So, Solomon was the offspring of someone that cared about God. David cared about God. You know, when, uh, when, when David had defeated all the people, uh, and he uh, finishes his conquests, you know, uh, he told God, man, you built me all these beautiful things. You know, what can I do for you? <laughs> can I, how, how can I please you, you know? And God told Nathan, go to David. <laughs> go to David and tell him this. When I chose you, did I ask for anything? Did I say that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you for this or what, what, what? 
Yet you've come to me and you've said that you that um that you want to build me a temple. Wow. It shall not be you. It shall not be you to build me this temple. It shall be your child after you. So the the temple is so so God doesn't dwell in temples built by men, built by the hands of men. He built he he, he dwells in what he builds. And we are this temple. We are the temple of God. And one day he's gonna dwell in us and Tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles is a type of this. We are coming into God is going to dwell, dwell in man. Jesus Christ is going to come in and is going to enter your body. And is going to begin um, changing the world through you. He will teach through you. He will work miracles through you. He will do all this through you. Because for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Amen. Let me pause and come back. So yes, friends, I want to encourage you. Don't just go to God to ask for stuff. Because at the end of the day, this, this is how I think. At, at the end of the day, you're going to finish your task that you're, you're calling. And you're going to just be there. Like in the house. <laughs> just chilling. And the final thing you get, you, you'll need to do is, is just know God. Like there's nothing else. When you're done, you'll just be bored. So why don't you just get to go know God before you do your calling. Because if you do your calling, and you know, the singers, there are singers, okay? But they're leading people towards the devil, just go to the devil, Beyonce, witchcraft songs, pure witchcraft. <laughs> go to the devil, go to the devil. So, why don't you just get to know God before you get to do your calling? Because when you get to know God, God and you will partner in your calling and you'll do it together, whatever it is. And it, it, imagine you're, say you're a singer. When you're partnering with God to do your singing, he's, it's not just going to be like, God, thank you for all this stuff. It's going to be like cool stuff, you know, with no even God or G. It will be like contemporary stuff. But when they ask you, how do you do this stuff, you know? How, how do you make such, such vibe music, okay? You just you say, it's God. God and I do it together. It won't have to be by God, 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 unless you call it like gospel music. So... If you're whatever you do, God wants to partner with you. He wants to know you. He wants to get to know you. He wants to get, get, get he wants your he wants your spirits to be like this. Inseparable. Through the wind and the waves and the storm and everything. He wants you to be like this. We're buddies, we're buddies, we're buddies. That's what the Song of Solomon is all about. So Solomon means rest, peace. And in the Song of Solomon there's this woman called the Shulamite. So Solomon's Solomon's life, life was the type of the millennium we're coming into. The bride of Christ, the Shulamite, is the so Solomon's enjoyed such a relationship with God, such a depth <laughs> that uh, God didn't withhold anything from him. Riches, wisdom, kingdoms, power, honor. He was greater than Alexander the Great. He was greater than the Nebuchadnezzar. He was. Great, he was the greatest. Okay, uh, uh, no, no, actually, he wasn't. He was, he was just the wisest. Actually, he was the greatest. He was the richest. That's what we're coming into. As the bride of Christ, the power, the honor, the majesty, the fire, the everything, the miracles, the money, the everything. I believe there are going to be some Christian trillionaires. Mark my words, they're going to be trillionaires. And trillionaires not to like accumulating and accumulating. They'll be giving, but the money will just come back. <laughs> They'll be giving, the money will just come back. They'll be helping the poor, money will just come back. Da-da-da, 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 da-da-da. Beautiful stuff. See ya.